Hi everybody, I'm in the workshop this morning, uh, going to do some bevel grinding and um, I'm going to show you how I, how I do my bevel grinding. I mostly use a jig. Now I have practiced freehand grinding and it takes a lot of practice but it can be done but for speed and consistency I always use a jig. And a jig is very simple, I've got two actually. This is the one I use for my longer blades. It's basically a piece of uh, of angle aluminium, and the reason why I use aluminium is twofold. One is it's lightweight, and secondly, it's a good heat sink. But uh, unfortunately, this angle is not quite a 90. You, it looks like a 90, but it's not. It's actually uh, leaning away uh, by one. It's one degree out, so it's 91 degrees. Uh, or 89 degrees, whichever way you want to measure it. So I have to compensate for that, and luckily on my machines here I've got an adjustable platen. So I set that to the correct angle, and uh, this will give me, uh, for this particular knife, a 20, 26 degree bevel. My other um, <coughs> jig is another piece of angle. <sighs> Dust everywhere. Just a smaller one. And this is what I use for my smaller knives. So you can see they go on there like that. Um, <clears throat> using the jig is easier, there's no doubt about it, but you still have to concentrate and you've still got to sort of steer the grind. Um, but it does take away one axis. So uh, you know you just have to just keep uh, your eye on, on your height of grind. Uh, the, the angles taken care of by the previous settings. Before I actually start my grinds, um, just after I've heat treated the blade, I always uh, put a freehand primary bevel on, well, a freehand, can you call it a primary bevel? Pre grind bevel, so a pre grind bevel, should we say? And you can see, perhaps you can see just about in the Ricasso area here, where I've I would have I would have um, blacked out the edge, scribed the centre line, and then I ground rather steep grinds by hand to that centre line. Uh, and what that does, it just keeps the knife a little bit cooler during the forming of the second uh, final bevel angle and uh, makes it easy to see also where the centre is. So that's something that I do, I found that's been uh, very helpful. Also on my grinder, this is a part one P36 belt. Uh, but as they become more worn you've got to be able to be careful because they can generate a bit of heat. Uh, so this one I'll use this maybe for one more knife and then uh, it'll be um, into the bin for it. Uh, or I might use it for, for profiling, you know, for, for shaping the knives. Um, and then into the bin. So heat build up is a concern. Um, a bucket of water. You can't see that can you? A bucket of water here. Good lighting is absolutely essential, for me at least. So good lighting. Obviously PPE. When I'm grinding, I use a mask. I use uh, A magnifier because you know uh, you've got to give yourself as much opportunity to see the grind as you possibly can and a good magnifier this this will, be, this will brings everything up close so I can see I can see any mistakes I can see any high spots low spots etc and finally I also wear a set of headphones because um, bevel grinding can be or using these machines in this environment can be uh, noisy and you'll notice also that in my workshop, 
there is no um, there are no windows, not in this side of the workshop, and that's intentional because um, if you've got a window, especially under during, during bright daylight conditions outside, um, the sun the sunlight can stream in, give you very harsh shadows, and uh, that's the last thing you want in your grinding room. So. Uh, a workshop with no windows is, is good, it means you can control the lighting. I've got good overhead uh, fluorescent tubes, plus I've got these spots here, and that's uh, pretty good. Right, well, I'm going to get suited and booted, and then I'll, uh, I'll bring you back and show you how, uh, how I go about grinding my bevels. Right, ready to go. Thanks to the modern technology now and this new computer I've got, I can narrate for you. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too concerned about the, uh, the knife getting too hot at the moment because the platen's cold, the belt's cold, and there's lots of air whizzing around as well. And there's still a good grit on that belt. And um, I'm nowhere near my fine cutting edge. So um, it doesn't need to be dumped in water so frequently. But as I progress closer to the fine cutting edge and finer grits, you'll see that I... Uh, and much more careful to ensure there's no heat build up. But as, as I say, at, at this stage, there is uh, barely any warmth uh, at the steel at the moment. And you'll see we don't get in the water, but there's no steam. No heat, hardly at all there, but I'm just being on the cautious side. Now we're on to uh, grinding the other side of the bevel. Um, this time I'll be a little bit more cautious about any heat build up because I, as I get closer to that, that edge, you know, that, that edge can heat up rather rapidly, so you've got to be really careful not to uh, overheat the edge and destroy the temper of the blade um, but first I'll make a few slight adjustments to the uh, to the, the, the actual belt tracking and then it's uh, on with the grinding I'm still using a, a 36 grit belt at the moment Right, I've brought you in for this close-up shot and here you'll see the uh, the water on the bevel evaporate uh, due to the heat as the belt passes over the steel and I'm pointing to it with my finger and you can see uh, how the, the, the friction causes the, the, the water to evaporate and that process of evaporation actually causes the blade a little bit as well At this stage, uh, I'll get a better light for you. At this stage, I finished the initial uh, grind, pre-grind. Set the bevel angle rather with the, the 36 grit belt. Put my glasses on, and you can probably see a very jagged burr, a very rough jagged burr 
Now you must form that burr. If you don't form that a burr, you'll never get a sharp blade. So that's uh, the first uh, grit out of the way. And um, at this stage I just visually check by eye to make sure that both the grinds are reasonably even. The plunges look reasonably even and the tip looks reasonably equal. And then as I re refine that, I go through finer grits and then I'll refine that. Uh, obviously when you go to the much finer grits, the polishing belts, you can't change much then with that, you just polish. But I will actually um, go to a finer grit now and then I'll put a calipers and ver verniers on this um, bevel to check that both sides are equal. So that's what I'm going to do now. Well, I'm down onto a finer grip belt now, I think it's a P120. And um, that allows me to take out the previous scratches from the, uh, the heavier coarser grit and it also allows me to manipulate the, uh, the height of the grain and so you'll see me shortly uh, I'm visually checking the grain at the moment you'll see me shortly get the calipers out and I'll, uh, I'll check either side with the calipers the vernier scale to make sure that they're, they're as equal as I can get them and then uh, I'll progress then on to the, uh, the final polishing belts. It's a waste of time trying to rectify any discrepancies in bevel height with uh, belts much uh, finer than the 120 because it just takes so long and generates so much heat. I'm reaching for the calipers now. With the second uh, grit uh, progression, I've um, evened up the, the grind and refined the grind somewhat, and then checked with my vernier on both sides in equal places for height of grind. So. The equal tip of course, I've equaled the tip uh, and so I've got a nice even bevel both sides now. Next stage is to refine the bevel even more to a finer grip and to uh, feather and radius the, uh, the plunges. The plunges must be very smooth, uh, this is a potential weakness in the knife. If you have, a, if you have very sharp angles in the plunge here in this area here you can cause what's known as stress rises and that can cause a failure point in the knife so that will we'll be smoothed out next so I'm going to work on the uh, the plunge area equal that all up and just uh, generally refine the grind
sorry for the shaky video at this point, but I'm hand holding the camera and <coughs> just um, showing you the edge of the belt. I'm overlapping the belt over the side of the platen by about a million, one and a half to two mil. And uh, this just allows me that when I offer the knife blank up, uh, it, it conforms to the uh, to the plunge line, plunge area, and just smooths things and polishes things up for me. You can just see a tiny overlap there, that's all it needs. takes a steady hand and a good eye and a bit of practice and uh, I'm just tidying up that the castle area and then, uh, then refining the edge uh, with the next up. I think it was a 220 or a 240 belt in this in instance. I will have to move you out of the way in a minute otherwise I won't be able to see for myself what I'm doing but I've got a flat 90 degree surface here to run the knife against and you can see what I'm going to do, I'm going to grind that that bump out once you've used uh, your, a belt for this operation sort of a profiling operation, that belt really is ruined for any other, for any other service apart from uh, future um, profile operations so uh, don't use good belts for this job So you can see, I've made the uh, the finger trawl area you now. So that's the uh, the finger trawl area tidied up, and you see that bump is now gone. I may just go over it with a finer grip belt before I finish, just tidy that up, but now I've got to go back on the bevel again moving down through another grit progression and uh, this bevel is almost finished plunges look nice and even so I'm happy with that tip looks good and even as well bevel this is the last chance I get to uh, alter anything on the bevel because the polishing grits won't really uh, do much but polish. You won't be able to remove much steel with those. So everything looks good. Final belt change, which would be to a, a gator belt or tri trizac belt. You can't get these belts in the UK. Got to get them from overseas.
just um, just hand rubbed it and tidied the flats of the knife up so uh, you can see the contrast between the actual flats of the blade here and the bevel there and it all looks quite even measures up nice and even on the verniers and there's no uh, discrepancies there so it should make uh, a good knife